Forest, Reverend Gilko Harry Bridge, resident minister of the Buddhist Church of Oakland. Greenbank Castro invited Reverend Bridge in 2012 for a music seminar at the Seattle Betsuin. For that event, I checked out Reverend Bridge uh, in the internet before his arrival, and I was fascinated by his Dharma Realm podcast and YouTube presence, including his bass guitar version of The Golden Chain, which I previewed. Adults and youth really appreciated the time with Reverend Harry then. He and I have since collaborated with his work on the soundtrack of the documentary video Streams of Light, and ultimately in this music theme convention and the convention theme song. Reverend Harry was born in Tokyo and has traveled and lived in many places. He currently resides in Oakland with his wife Mika and cat Luna. He is in high demand as a guest speaker and is also adjunct faculty of the Institute of Buddhist Studies. You may refer to page 27 in the convention booklet for Reverend Bridges' varied music interests and bands he has played in. On behalf of the convention committee, I would also like to acknowledge and thank Rowan Kato on drums and Jim Norton on saxophone for their time. And uh, Merwin will also help Reverend Bridge with his improvising talent during this keynote address. Uh -huh. Without further ado, Reverend Harry Bridge for his Dharma message entitled Rhythm and Blues of the Nembutsu. I got all this stuff to take care of here, so give me a second. Okay, why don't we start with Gosho? Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. It's so nice uh, to be back here uh, in the Northwest, and I really want to thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, to speak to you here at the, um, this great um, musical uh, Northwest District Convention. Uh, I'll point out one thing in the um, program. It's not a mistake, I do play bass guitar, but bass guitar is really long and big and hard to take on an airplane. So I'm playing, a, uh, it's called a U bass, ukulele bass. <laughs> okay, so, so I'll play that a little bit more later. Um, also, the title, so the title for the um, convention is Everyday Rhythm of the Nembutsu. Right? And uh, I love it because uh, there's this idea of uh, that Nembutsu is just every day, right? Our everyday life, right? It doesn't have to be uh, just when we're at temple. That, uh, you know, in Japan, in the old days, people just walked around, nam manda, nam manda, right? Just kind of reciting Nembutsu spontaneously, right? Anytime, not only when the minister says it and then, you know, say it back. Right, that this idea that it just comes to you spontaneously, uh, naturally. So this idea uh, of the everyday nembutsu. Uh, and then this idea of the rhythm of the nembutsu. And we'll do it a little bit in mind, and I like this idea because nembutsu does have rhythm, and we say it in a few different ways too, right? Namandabu, namandabu, or namu amidabutsu, namu amidabutsu, namu amidabutsu. This kind of uh, repetitive rhythm, right, that we find. Uh, and then they asked me to come up with a title. So there's a couple of different versions of my title in the, in the booklet. One of them says, Rhythm and Blues and the Nembutsu. But that's, one word is different. I wanted the Rhythm and Blues of the Nembutsu, right? To kind of match the title of the convention. Rhythm of the Nembutsu is kind of a joke. It doesn't really work. But, um, <laughs> but and I'm, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later too, with this idea uh, of rhythm and blues as one uh, genre of music. It's a genre of American music. Right? And so I just stuck the end, end blues into the rhythm of the Nembutsu. So rhythm, of Nem, rhythm and blues of the Nembutsu, uh, this kind of idea uh, for the uh, title of my talk. And hopefully it will become clear uh, as things go on. I was very fortunate uh, as a child. Uh, my parents loved music. Uh, and I didn't maybe realize so much uh, until later. Uh, I remember, uh, but we had an organ at my house. My dad played accordion. Uh, my dad was a little bit older, he was born in 1929, so he's kind of like a previous generation. So I know some of you are here, um, <laughs> that generation, but, but like a lot of my friends, my dad was older than like my friends' dads and, or parents, right? And so, so he would play the accordion and he could play the piano and we had like show tunes at home and you know, he'd play the organ and play these kind of show tunes. 
Uh, and then later on, after my parents passed away, I was going through their stuff, and I found some records that belonged to my mom um, that I'd never seen before. Well, one of them I had that I still have and I treasure is the soundtrack to um, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> double gatefold, double LP, right? amazing album. Um, I didn't appreciate it when I was younger, but um, I came to really love that album, and especially because it was my mom's copy. There's a song on there, um, what's it called? A Fifth of Beethoven. Right? I remember dancing around as a little kid with my mom to that song. Right? And then uh, finding that LP and being able to um, play back that LP. I still have recording of that LP. Right? And be like, this is the one that my mom had. Right? She bought this. She's the one who put it, physically put it on. That's one of the things that's, I'm going to make little asides here and there. That's one of the things that's missing with MP3s and digital music, like Rhapsody and all the downloading kind of, you don't have that physical thing, right? Uh, and so that the physicality of uh, that LP, that record, right, really important uh, to me, because, uh, you know, it did belong to my mom. I found another LP of classical music, and it had her handwritten name on it her maiden name, right? So it came from before uh, my parents got married, right? And it was something that she treasured uh, when she was a student in Tokyo, learning to become a nurse, right? Being in college and everything. So having that record too, uh, really, really important to me. So I, you know, I learned piano, I took piano lessons. Uh, but then, uh, you know, I was an only child. Uh, we moved to Japan, to Tokyo, uh, when I was 11. Right, which is maybe a good time to go because you're starting junior high, it's hard to go into a new school anyway. Right? But all my friends gone, have to make new friends, right? have to go into and to a foreign country that I knew about because my mom was Japanese, but I didn't speak Japanese. I grew up in Massachusetts. Right? Uh, and so to go to Japan uh, was, I think, kind of frightening, overwhelming in a lot of ways, whether I realized it or not. Uh, and thinking back to my high school, uh, music just became a really big part of my life, just a huge part of my life. Uh, and I really think that music saved me. Right? Music uh, allowed me to find myself, right? find something about myself, to become uh, more comfortable with myself, right? uh, to enjoy my life. Uh, everything in balance, I put down music saved me, Walkman. Because I used to walk, I remember Walkman, that little tape player, right? I walked around school with Walkman and headphones on all the time. My, we had an hour-long bus ride to school, I had the headphones on, I'm listening to music. Uh, and I think I, maybe if I hadn't had the Walkman, I would have talked to more people. I don't know. I was kind of a loner, you know, only child and everything. Uh, but seriously, having that music, right, this kind of other world that I could go to and feel comfortable in, uh, discover, uh, explore, Right? Listening uh, to this music uh, as I was going through my life. We have music all around us, all the time. Talking about balance, sometimes it's too much, I think. There's music in commercials. There's music at the supermarket. There's music at the mall. Right? There's music at the um, dentist office. Right? Music everywhere. To the point where I think we kind of um, don't appreciate it, or we take it for granted. Right? All this music around. Uh, and so, but just kind of thinking about uh, how we have this music all the time. Now, I spoke at uh, Southern District Junior YBA Conference last year, and I had an idea, and I never did it. I totally forgot. So, so what I was thinking is, you know, they say, we'd like to now uh, welcome our keynote speaker, Reverend Bridge, and you just kind of walk up, and it's all quiet, and everybody's waiting, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if you had theme music to walk out to? <laughs> <laughs> so that you know you come out and your theme. So I came up with a couple of um, theme songs that I could possibly get. Now remember, it was a um, junior YBA was technology conference, so this was going to be my walk-on music for this one. Ready? Yes, I love technology. Yes, I love technology. Yes, I love okay. technology. I'll make them forever. <laughs> Always and forever. Always and forever. So that, right, that's kind of a geeky kind of. Uh, anybody know where that comes from? Right, Napoleon Dynamite, um, the, the song that um, uh, Napoleon's um, brother sang to his um, fiance, his wife, right, at the wedding ceremony. Um, so that, that, that could be one, right, thing, the walk out music. Maybe this one's a little cooler. This one I'm going to play a couple times. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> That's better, huh? That's better than you think. Um, so, so that song is actually kind of important uh, to what I want to talk about. That's a, kind of a cool rhythm. Let's listen to it again. That's the name of the song, Tramp, <laughs> um, by Lowell Fulson. It was covered by, um, not Marvin Gaye, uh, uh, Otis Redding. There's a cover version of Otis Redding from um, Stax, right? So uh, that's, that's a one version of rhythm and blues. Uh, America has this amazing music history. Right? America has a kind of a crazy history uh, compared to um, a lot of countries in the world, just with all kinds of stuff that happened. Uh, and I think there was a lot of pain and suffering that went into uh, the birth and growth of our country, right? But uh, a lot of amazing things came out of it too, right? And uh, blues is one kind of music. Uh, rhythm and blues is related, but maybe a little bit different, right? And um, there's also a genre called R&B, right? So that's another reason why I kind of wanted to bring it up, because R&B is rhythm and blues. Right? And nowadays they just call it R&B and it's something totally different than what I just played. Right? Um, soul R&B, right? this kind of um, genre, there's a whole kind of separate uh, music charts for that. Right? So it's related to African Americans. They call it black music in Japan. Right? Um, black people, right? this um, music that came out uh, of African American experience. And rhythm and blues is really kind of um, developing out of the blues music. You know, they used to call it race music. In the old, you know, before World War II, um, they had records, you know, just um, the seven-inch singles, right? And so uh, this genre of blues, uh, you know, someone with this bottleneck guitar and singing, Robert Johnson. Uh, later on, it becomes like more electric, like Muddy Waters. Uh, and then the rhythm, the, the drums and the bass uh, become like this kind of backbeat, right? That rock and roll takes on too. So rock and roll is another kind of uh, genre. Uh, think Elvis Presley. Right, Chuck Berry, right? So rock and roll, uh, rhythm and blues are really uh, related, interrelated really, really deeply. So uh, this R&B music is this kind of classic, I'll call it classic R&B, right? And then we can have like contemporary R&B, right? Contemporary R&B, I'm not so into it. I don't, I'm not a big fan, but I know it's huge in our culture, right? Um, D'Angelo, uh, I can't name that many R&B artists, but um, I think you hear it, you'd know it, right? Uh, but this kind of classic uh, R&B uh, aesthetic right, of this uh, rhythm and blues uh, is something that really uh, touches me deeply. Uh, the first music, rock music that I got into was the Beatles. Right? If, you're, if I was going to recommend to one young person, what kind of music should I listen to to get into music? I would say the Beatles. Right? Because the Beatles took on so many, they, you listen to their music, there's so many different kinds of music represented. I mean, they even do like um, kind of doo-wop and um, that kind of um, 50s, 60s kind of Tamla soul kind of stuff. They do rock and roll, they do Chuck Berry, uh, they do a little bit of country, right? Later on, they start doing more even work using uh, string quartet, Eleanor Rigby, right? All these, so many different kinds. They even get 20th century classical in there, right? So much, even heavy metal. I think has almost have its, has its birth with the Beatles. So I would recommend the, um, the Beatles because that was the first rock music that I really, really deeply got into and because it introduced me to a whole range of, of different kinds of music. So thinking about what kind of music do you like, right? And I realized if you look in your program, this is one of the coolest parts of your program. Look at the program. Page 26, uh, page 27. Okay, so, so they, they have the bios of a whole bunch of people in here. So page 27, um, Reverend Koshin Ogui. <laughs> Birthplace, education, family, and then favorite music. Any music. Oh, good. <laughs> That's a good answer, huh? Any music. Okay. Um, oh, there I am at the bottom. I went nuts. Reverend Harry Gokyo Bridge, Birthplace, education, favorite music. Rock, funk, classic R&B, blues, progressive rock, heavy metal, electronic, 20th century classical, classical, etc. Okay, so that's like that's really the kind of music that I like. Like I, I like all these different kinds of music. Okay, uh, what else do people like? 
I like this because uh, there's different, oh, look at this, um, Paul Veal Sensei. Uh, his broad interests include classical, folk, 50s style rock and roll, any kind of music with an East Coast swing beat, and then classical artists like Mozart, Debussy, Satie. Awesome, I love Satie. Um, and then contemporary artists like Cole Porter, contemporary meaning contemporary from like 30, 40 years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cole Porter, uh, maybe 50 years ago, Cole Porter, Ellen Fitzgerald, Neil Young, okay, that's getting a little bit closer. Right? Um, Reverend Christine Marr, what is she like? Oh, look at that. No contest, the Beatles. Yes, right, with John being my favorite, her favorite, right, John Lennon. I love John Lennon. I think I like all the Beatles equally. But anyway, uh, Reverend Kojo Kakihara, uh, favorite music musician, sutras and classical music. Good answer, where is he? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I like that too, that's great. Sutras are a kind of music. Huh. It's not music maybe in the sense that we think of like, I want to listen to some music. I'm going to throw on some juicy hit. <laughs> you could, especially the musical one we just listened to. Um, but sutra is a very deep kind of music, right? It's not music for entertainment. It's not music for background. Right? It's music where we're, we're doing music to praise the Buddha, right? to recite the sutras uh, in a different way than just like reading it or um, just kind of reading it out loud. Uh, instead, we're able to vocalize together. There's a way to do it that we can all do it together, right? That we can uh, praise the Buddha and recite the sutras. Uh, classical music too, so that's good. Um, so I like this because there's all this different range of people. Um, oh, look at um, Reverend Dennis Fujimoto. I liked his too. Um, favorite music musician, D.I. Lewis. You heard of him, right? Um, he was here a few years ago with me and um, doing other stuff. I, I'm, I look forward to working with him more. We just haven't had a chance. Oh, Donna Sasaki. Who's that? <laughs> Sangha Taiko. Right? So this is a great answer too. Because there's all kinds of different answers we could give. What's your favorite music? Right? We can name a genre. We can name a band of this famous people that everyone in the world has heard of. Or we can name local people. Right? Because you don't have to be um, world famous to do music. Right? Nobody has to know about you. You can do music. Just do it in the shower. Right? Nobody hears you. Well, maybe some people have to hear you. But, but um, you, know, you can just do it personally. Uh, but then we have uh, local musicians, too, uh, that are doing new kinds of music, writing new songs, finding new ways to sing um, songs that we already know, right? So uh, just a really, really uh, neat uh, range uh, to think about music. What kind of music do I like? Right? So think about that. What kind of music do you like? Um, one thing I've been kind of thinking about is, you know, we have our gathas. Gatha is a name technical pronunciation, but we say Gotha, right? And we have a hundred year plus tradition of Gothas, right? We have uh, songs that uh, were composed uh, throughout the 20th century, into the 21st century. Right? And the, I mean, the history of Gothas, I'm not gonna go into it. Um, some people are working on that. It's really fascinating because it's a back and forth between Japan and the West, right? Um, J Japan and Asia and the West. Maybe in the Gathas we can really see a meeting of cultures, a fascinating meeting of cultures. Right? So Japan uh, gets kind of broken open by the West in the late, 20th, uh, late 19th century, right? that starts out the Meiji period. And during that time, uh, Japan really goes kind of through a crisis, a cultural crisis, right? of what are we doing? The West is so far ahead of us, we've got to learn about them. And they send people overseas to study, uh, they go overseas and come back. Uh, bring philosophy and literature and music and science and medicine. Uh, and so a lot of gathas get written in that kind of atmosphere uh, of looking to the West, right? and really strongly influenced by the West. Now I heard something really interesting. Um, traditional Japanese music like shakuhachi, koto, shamisen, biwa, gagaku, was stopped being, or was never taught in public schools from the early 20th century, early 1900s. They, they only taught Western music. Isn't that crazy? The, the cultural uh, heritage of Japan, of Japanese music, uh, was kind of jettisoned uh, because they just had this really, uh, I think, kind of inferiority complex compared to the West. 
Um, that's oversimplifying, but you could study shamisen or shakuhachi, but you had to do it privately. You wouldn't get it at public school. So uh, we find uh, that Japanese culture in the uh, 20th century, uh, and Japanese music especially, is strongly influenced uh, by Western music. So we think of, you know, I think, everybody know Enka music? Enka, right? Who likes Enka music? I'm kind of, yeah, yeah, some people like it, right? My mom listened to Enka, okay, good. <laughs> social agree, previous social agree, likes, <laughs> likes um, Enka. My mom listened to Enka all the time when I lived in Tokyo and it would be on TV and everything, and so I heard it a lot. Uh, and I, we get a Japanese melodic feel from that, right? There's a there's, um, that melodic feel, but if you listen to it, it's all Western instruments. There's drums. Right, there's bass, uh, there's electric guitar, right, violins, right, horns. Uh, so really interesting kind of melding of uh, the, the cultures. And so one thing I've kind of been thinking about is our gathas, a lot of times it's played on organ or piano, and we get up and we kind of sing uncomfortably. You know? um, so I think that one of the... Um, challenges for the 21st century for us, but also areas of um, exploration, kind of a frontier, is um, seeing how our agathas develop uh, into the 21st century. And a lot of work's been done already, um, still being done. Right? Uh, and one thing I realized is there's all these musical aesthetics, kind of musical cultures, musical worlds, that we just live in in America. Okay? Uh, that we just uh, don't even realize, like R&B, contemporary R&B, uh, rock. You watch a car commercial, you can hear the who, um, you can hear electronic music, uh, you can hear a brand new band of, of any kind of genre, um, 60s kind of um, soul R&B. We hear that. If you watch TV, you hear all these different uh, genres of music, uh, these kind of different aesthetics uh, of what music should sound like. And so I'm, one of the things I wonder, you know, is when are we going to see some of those uh, genres kind of uh, introduced, right, into our, where it just kind of spontaneously happens in our goggles. So that's one thing I've been kind of working on. Uh, and I'm influenced by this band called the Scorpions. Actually, they're just called Scorpions. Ever heard of them? They're a German heavy metal band, okay? <laughs> um, so they, they've been around since the 70s, and they have an album called Tokyo Tapes. They're playing at Budokan in, in Tokyo. I'm um, playing to like a sold out crowd, right? And so it's really interesting because uh, the, the singer finds this uh, uh, Japanese song and kind of interprets it. So let's listen a little bit. You, I bet you know the song too. Yeah. And I hope you will stay with me together. It's called Cut John What's Key. <laughs> he learned the song, he's German. <laughs> Audience is Japanese, young people. So he's really um, affirming the culture, I feel like. Wow, you sang our song. You sang a song from our culture. I think it's really amazing. They just start singing. There's a huge crowd with all kinds. And hear what they listen to what they do with it. Scorpions, okay? Um, so I heard that, 
Um, and I thought, we have a song kind of like that. So if you know it, sing along. It happens twice so we can listen. So I did, I recorded this with my friend Greg de Guglielmo, uh, who is a drummer that um, I kind of grew up with uh, after college. So. Inspired me to do this um, heavy metal on It kind of fits the lyrics. I break my bones to dust. Right? So you can make. Have you seen these? Um, they've done these parodies of um, death metal versions of like pop acts. So like um, uh, Taylor Swift, but it's written in that weird kind of like Swedish weird writing. And okay, it's going over your head, but. <laughs> You could have like bones and skeletons like ground up at the bottom and old folks on wood. <laughs> I think it'd be cool. We got to work on that. Somebody work on that. <laughs> so there's another aesthetic, um, hip hop, right? That um, or rap, as you might call it, right? So this is another kind of music that many of your kids or grandkids probably listen to. Um, I've listened in my life. Um, it's not my favorite genre, but I have an appreciation for um, for some. Uh, hip hop, and uh, it comes out of R and B in a lot of ways. It right? comes out uh, of uh, African American, like black music experience, right? And it's interesting. It has technology because people started out with records. They couldn't afford instruments. They didn't have music education in their schools, but they had a record player, <laughs> right? And you could just play records and repeat, play things over and over and over again to do music to rap over, right? Um, so there's this really interesting um, thing that was on the internet that um, I taped off there, and it's a hip-hop version of Heart Sutra. Okay, it's really interesting, okay? So uh, let's listen to it a little bit. I don't know who did it. It's called, but the group that did it is called Rap Amida. <laughs> So he, he's going to rap the Hanya Shingyo, the Heart Sutra, word for word. I love that. It's so creative, right? And it sounds like he's rapping in Japanese, right? But he's rapping the Hanya Shingyo. Shiki sokuze, or ku sokuze, shiki, shiki sokuze, ku. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Right? He's rapping 
basic Mahayana emptiness ideas. Okay? Uh, and so I really love it. See, I didn't get it at first. I saw it on Facebook and I played it. I was like, yeah, that's cute. Uh, and then um, Takamiyaji came in, um, who's in Japan now. He's coming back to be a minister in a little bit. Right? And um, he brought it, he comes to my class, he was a student in my class, he goes, Sensei, did you hear that rap, Heart Sutra? I was like, uh, yeah, he's like, it's so cool, here, check it out. And he like pulls it out, he was so into it. Right? So I learned from, from through him to appreciate it. So that's something interesting too, that a lot of times it's like, oh, I don't like that kind of music. I like all kinds of music except rap. That's not music. You know, like we hear people say that, and I don't think that's the right attitude. Um, there could be things in music that you don't like that are actually amazing. Right? And so, uh, as a music lover, uh, I try to uh, keep an open mind right? and uh, listen to uh, hear what's good in that music right? and maybe learn that appreciation. So we're going to do a little bit of R&B, um, this kind of groove kind of thing, and you're all going to participate, so can I ask Merwin Kato to please come up with the drums? And I'm going to go over to the no. So you gotta help out. All right. So I got the U base here, right. and and this thing is amazing. It's, it looks like a ukulele, huh? Can you tell it's not a ukulele? I mean, it is a ukulele, but it's bass. It's got these um, plastic strings that are, are like rubber kind of strings. Is that the groove we're going to do? Let's see. Oh, let's do it a little slower. So I took a, um, a hint from uh, the Gotha project. Uh, and so we're going to have you um, just chant Naman Dabu first. Okay, so. Interesting, huh? Like this, this uh, groove, right? Um, so 
for my aesthetic, that's a music that I feel really comfortable with, right? This uh, funk, that's another genre, right, that I didn't mention, that comes out of R&B, right? Uh, funk music, uh, again, is a, comes out of African-American experience, uh, African-American kind of music. Uh, last night, with the Junior YBA, we played a little bit, and we had this thing, we made this kind of, we rolled dice, and then made this rhythm chart and put dots on the different beats, like out of eight beats, and then you had to play on those beats. So it was kind of weird to be like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You know, like, kind of uncomfortable sometimes in weird places. But when you put it all together, that's what funk music becomes. Every instrument is playing something different. Uh, on the kick drum, you know, the kick is basically one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and then the snare is on two and one, two, three, four, one, Right? And so that kind of music is music that you can move to, moving music you can groove to, right? Um, and so I don't know what will happen with that, uh, but just this kind of, I wanted to experiment a little bit uh, with that for the reciting the Nembutsu, right? Another, so sometimes I just, another thing I do sometimes is just kind of do a melodic improvised Nembutsu with just a drone. And I'll be washing in the kitchen at the church, and the refrigerator's really loud. It just goes like, <laughs> refrigerator. So you can say Nembutsu anytime. Seriously. Right? I mean, that's the amazing thing about Nembutsu. You don't have to have a minister around to say it. You don't have to be at temple to say it. Uh, you don't have to be in any special circumstances. Uh, you don't have to have someone else say it first before you can. You can just say it any time. Right? We have a few different ways to say it. Namandal, namandal, namandal. Namandabu, namandabu, namandabu. Right? Or namu amidabu tsu. Right? Namu amidabu. Maybe, you'll, maybe you've been practicing Shoshinge and you just find yourself chanting right, the Nembutsu from the Wasans. Right? They're so beautiful. That's why we got to bring back Shoshinge, because part of it is because the Nembutsu is oh. during the uh, Nembutsu Wasan. Right? Uh, so, so our tradition is deeply rooted in music. Uh, musicality, Nembutsu, right? all the time. Right? So that uh, we can uh, say the Nembutsu anytime. That's the everyday, everyday rhythm of the Nembutsu. Right? Maybe your life becomes the everyday rhythm of the Nembutsu. Right? that uh, Nembutsu is that backbeat, that groove of your life, right? So that whatever you're going through, the good times, the difficult times, right? That the Nembutsu uh, is there. Maybe that's the ultimate soundtrack, right? The ultimate background music. But it's not background like I can forget about it. It's, it's my walk-on music, right? <laughs> and whatever I'm going into, whatever I'm going through, uh, I have this kind of soundtrack, uh, this, this um, music, uh, this nembutsu, right, uh, to fall back on. So I got one more thing that we can do together, right, and then uh, we'll close, right, where's my 10 minute sign? <laughs> there, okay, she's waving at me, good, good, okay. <laughs> so, let me get all set up here. This is something that I've tried to do before and it's really hard to do, like I say, playing bass and singing at the same time is really hard. People like Geddy Lee, Paul McCartney are amazing because they can play these difficult bass lines and sing at the same time. Uh, and so, oh, hold on. I put myself in airplane mode, but I need the internet. <laughs> so this is Golden Chain, okay? And you don't have to worry, there's many different versions of the Golden Chain, um, but it's call and response. Okay, so I'll do it, and then you respond back. So again, this is my friend, my drummer, um, Greg Guglielmo, uh, on the drums. And I'm playing bass on this one so that I don't have to uh, sing. Okay, so we're going to do this and close with this. Ready? Okay, ready? I am a link. Gentle. I'm trying to be kind and gentle.
Namo Amitabha. 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 Namo Amitabha.